It was a spur of the moment decision. I didn't actually think about it beforehand. I was uh, at work and uh, I was in the newsroom watching Al Arabiya um, and I saw the Battle of the Camels when the men on horseback and camelback stormed into the square and started beating up the pro-democracy activists using whips and sticks and, you know, it, it was a horrible scene. And, um, and then I was given the news t bulletin to read and there was no mention of what had just happened. And I thought that my news, the editor had missed it, you know, I thought, where is, where is what just happened? And she said, no, we're not allowed to mention it. We have clear instructions. Don't you dare. And, you know, for me, that was it. Um, I didn't come back. I read the news, but I just walked out, and the following day they kept calling me, aren't you coming in? And I just thought I couldn't go through with this because um, I had been asked to call the opposition activists, uh, foreign agents, hired criminals. I refused to do that because I had been to Tahrir and I had seen that these were the Egyptians, a people's movement, all-inclusive, making very legitimate demands. And I didn't want to betray them. I didn't want to have the blood of the martyrs on my hands. I wanted to be able to sleep at night with a clear conscience. Nile TV is the English language channel of Egypt. And so um, our target audience is the foreign community. And I think the Mubarak regime wanted to give this semblance of free speech and democracy. So there was no meddling, except during election time. And that's when I stayed off the air. I never covered elections because I knew I couldn't say they were rigged and flawed. So um, I never worked during election time. But this was the first time I had faced this kind of uh, meddling with, with news reporting. We knew beforehand that the activists had called for a day of rage on National Police Day uh, because they had posted these videos of uh, showing police brutality and they had called people to come out on the street and protest. And But nobody imagined how big it would be. We thought it would be a small group of a few hundred people. And I was actually walking from the Intercontinental to the television building at the time and I happened to look behind me and I saw, you know, people across the bridge, but thousands of them. I had never seen so many people gathered because, as you know, we have an emergency law in Egypt that prohibits uh, large assemblies. So. I couldn't believe my eyes. It looked like uh, Mecca or Medina during the Hajj. You know, thousands of people and they were storming, marching towards Tahrir Square. I was very tempted to, to, to go and, you know, find out more, what, but, but I had to go into the uh, TV building and, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't able to go home that night. We had to spend the night there uh, on emergency because we knew there was a state of emergency, something unusual was happening. And uh, police uh, forces were out on the streets. Uh, uh, they looked very tense, you know, they, they looked quite shocked. No one expected anything of that size. That wasn't on our minds uh, the, when he uh, was forced out. It was just a night of celebration. We stayed out the whole night in Tahrir, dancing, singing nationalistic songs, and it was just euphoria, you know, the energy that was there and the relief, and we all felt liberated. And next day, I remember, I saw the country with new eyes. I just looked and I thought, how beautiful Cairo is, you know, the Nile and everything. You know, the, our first real taste of freedom was absolutely great. We didn't no, because he had fallen so quickly in just 18 days. You know, a ruthless regime that had been in power for 30 years, falling in 18 days, and then we thought the rest would be easy. But it <laughs> turned out to be that, you know, the fight was just beginning. It's pretty chaotic and messy. Um, very few of the demands of the revolution have been met. 
Uh, we're still waiting to see a free press, an independent judiciary. Uh, they've revitalized the emergency law in its wider scope. Um, the military trials of civilians, we've had 12,000 civilians tried in martial courts uh, in the last eight months. That's more than in the 30 years under Mubarak. So it's very worrying, but the energy is still there. And I feel, you know, it's irreversible. People have lost their fear. There are ongoing strikes every day, you know, um, public transport workers, uh, teachers, university professors, doctors, everybody's on strike uh, asking for better work conditions and higher wages. And uh, at the same time, you know, mess apart aside, uh, there are some good things happening. Uh, trade unions being formed, labor syndicates, um, new political parties. Uh, I think everyone wants to come on board and not get left behind. We now feel that we have claimed Egypt back from the grip of dictatorship and we want to start, you know, we want to be on board and you saw how the young people came out on the streets painting the pavements and collecting garbage. Every Egyptian feels they now have a stake in their country and uh, I know it's going to be a, a very long and hard struggle uh, and but at least we found our voices and we keep going back to Tahrir to, to, to keep the pressure on, you know, keep the heat on the military dictatorship that's there now. We've already been an inspiration to not just countries in the region but beyond. Uh, some are saying that the Wall Street protests are actually were actually inspired by the Egyptian uprising. Um, I'm very optimistic because uh, I know there's no going back and I know that, you know, things have changed and people are very aware. We keep going back to Tahrir every Friday and I see that the military rulers make concessions every Thursday because they know that there is a million people's march on Friday. So, people power, it's working. And um, now we know that we have that power, we will continue to use it until our goals are met.